What a chaotic day it was in the association. The Bucks making the head coaching change, the dismissal of Adrian Griffin and potentially welcoming in Doc Rivers. All of that, Donnie, as we have reached the midway point of this 2023-24 NBA season. That's why the intensity has ramped up because the Bucks see on the horizon a postseason push where they need a guy they believe will guide them in the direction to an Eastern Conference crown in an NBA championship. It is also Rivals Week in the NBA. Some of that bad blood with your neighbors that are pretty, pretty close. That includes in Brooklyn, the Nets hosting the Knicks last night inside the Barclays Center. Brooklyn closed as a four-point underdog in the New York Knicks are on that upswing as well in the Eastern Conference. Make that 10 wins in the last 12 games for New York. Last night in Brooklyn, the final score, 108-103. The Knickerbockers cover as a four-point road favorite. And Donnie, in this 10-game win streak out of their last 12, I should say, the Knicks have gone under in all 10 of those victories, under in 11 of their last 12 games in total. That's what Tibbs likes. You know what else Tibbs likes? A 30-point performance by Julius Randle and also Jalen Brunson in this game and a nice comeback victory by winning the fourth quarter by 14 points. Now, this might be an anomaly, Ben, in an NBA game. You take a look at the Knicks of what they shot from the field, 46%. It's fine. 35% from three-point line, 94% from the free throw line, which included 18 of 19 free throws. You go down on a box score to the Brooklyn Nets. How about this, Ben? What if you saw this? Four of five from the free throw line here, barely getting attempts here. That's quality defense Mm. from the Knicks, not fouling and giving away the easy shots from the charity stripe to hold the Nets to under 105 points. That's a good victory here. And again, I thought yesterday the right move, the public play obviously was the Knicks and it won. Congratulations. But I like the Nets. And again, if you would tell me that the Nets would have the lead entering into the fourth quarter, I would have taken that. But that's a great defensive performance to hold the Nets under 20 points in the fourth quarter and come away with that victory. That's Tom Thibodeau basketball, baby. OG Mm -hmm. Ananobi, who was acquired by Toronto early on in January, has been there for all 10 of these wins in their last 12 games. The OG effect for the New York Knicks, who are now 17-9 against the spread, booked as a favorite this year. One of seven teams that booked as a favorite has a cover percentage of 65% or better. Meanwhile, Brooklyn now falls to 11-15 and 2 against the spread as an underdog for the Nets, only two covers in their last 10 games booked as a dog. So that was the battle of the greater New York City area, the battle of Los Angeles late night in LA, the Clippers playing host to the Lakers. Of course, they occupy the same building, the crypto.com arena in downtown LA. The Clippers do win by 11 points and cover as a nine and a half point favorite, 127 116. We knew LeBron was not playing in this game, just the third game he has missed this year for the Lakers. But Donnie, we've said it multiple times. The Clippers were two games below 500 at the end of November, eight and 10. From that point, since the end of November, LA is 20 and four, and they are 22 and 13 against the number when booked as the favorites. We're now in that territory here, Ben, for the Los Angeles Clippers. It's not really about the regular season anymore. We've shown that, hey, look, these guys do work. They play well together, and they can win big basketball games. So what's next on the horizon? Having a fantastic regular season? Not so much here. It's just getting to the playoffs and being healthy with your veteran players, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, also at the bench, Russell Westbrook, and Norm Powell, who actually chipped in with 17 points last night. They've been great here in all aspects. So now you're starting to maybe measure these guys down the stretch and also if you flip it over to the Los Angeles Lakers without LeBron James it's almost like a swan song for them like ah you know what that's just a given up night which again you can do when your team is 10 to 15 games above 500 give your superstar a rest and say you know what if we lose this game it's not that big of a deal but when you're the Lakers entering into that game yesterday Ben at 22 and 22 you're 500 LeBron James a little bit banged up gets the night off and you get hammered by 11 points essentially on your home court it's not a good look but this is what we've expected 
yeah. year from the Los Angeles Lakers. Their only hope was making the playoffs with everybody healthy. And also, this was supposed to be the season for LeBron James early on. Hey, look, I'm getting older. I'm still a great basketball player, but I have to pace myself this season. And right off the bat, when the Lakers were winning games, they were asking LeBron James, hey, what gives you? He's like, you know what? I'm just fighting father time now. If I got to play 40 minutes every night, we'll see how long this goes. We know how this is going to end up with LeBron James being yeah. banged up on a playoff run. It's not going to end kindly for the Lakers. The Lakers are now 8-10 and 10 against the spread, booked as the underdog. And because of the loss straight up, they fall to 22-23, and 23, currently in that ninth spot, that ninth overall seed in the Western Conference. They would be in the play-in tournament if the season ended today. It does not, but again, we are past the midway point. The Lakers have played 45 games out of their 82 in the regular season. The Clippers had won 11 straight against the Lakers entering this 2023-24 campaign. The Lakers won each of the first two to start this year. The Clippers get the victory last night in game number three between these two sides in L.A. Now we go to Indianapolis. The Nuggets on a road trip out in the east and now to the Midwest against the Pacers and a 114-109 win for the Denver Nuggets where Nikola Jokic hit the game dagger in that three-pointer with just over six seconds remaining in regulation it was a two-point game at the time it extended the lead to five it sealed the game for the nugs they did not cover by the hook closing line was five and a half points in favor of denver as a road favorite this year for the nuggets only six and 13 against the spread but denver now tied in terms of the overall standings for that top record in the western conference yeah, not a great start here to the uh, Pascal Siakam error here in Indiana. Nope. Now, granted, you're still waiting for Tyrese Halliburton to come back and be healthy. There was a chance that we thought he was going to play yesterday in the morning, but later on in the afternoon, it looks like he's probably going to even be out a few more games here. So it certainly doesn't help the Pacers and the pace that they used to play at, which we were routinely seeing games at 150 to 140 with the Indiana Pacers. This one much more measured at 114 to 109. But when you have your superstars on the road, both get you 31 points and a triple-double here by Yoke you're probably going to win most of those basketball games and also be efficient, Ben, as a team. Going on the road as the Nuggets are entering that game at 13 and 10 on the road, now improving to 14 and 10, shooting 50% from the floor, 88% yeah. from the free throw line. You have the better superstars. You won that basketball game. That's the way it's supposed to be. 31 wins now in the season for the Denver Nuggets. Nikola Jokic from the floor last night, 13 of 19. His field goal percentage in the month of January is 71.5 percent speaking of efficient that 31 point triple double it was a plus 165 price we shared with you entering that game indiana has lost all three games with pascal siakam mm. in the lineup currently for the pacers they do cover with that hook as the slight home underdog yesterday in indy now 15 10 and 1 against the spread so the denver nuggets have played 40 five games they are currently tied for the top seed in the western conference because they have one more win than both okc and minnesota 30 for the thunder and the t-wolves 31 for the nuggets but again two more games than both okc and minnesota so one more loss as well for the nuggets 14 as compared to the 13 for both the timberwolves and the thunder so okc and minnesota a better winning percentage in the western conference but technically all tied for that top seed. The Clippers only a game and a half back, 28 and 14, a jumble top of the Western Conference. Speaking of Oklahoma City, at home last night, booked as a large favorite, laying 13 and a half against the Portland Trailblazers. A wild and chaotic finish down the stretch. Under the final minute of regulation, Malcolm Brogdon was called for a double dribble. Chauncey Billups, the head coach, of course, for the Trailblazers, hated the call, lost his mind, led to a tech. Shea Gilgis Alexander made that technical free throw to tie the game at 109 apiece. And then under 10 ticks remaining in regulation, Jalen Williams hits what would be the game winning shot for Oklahoma City. They win 111 109 over Portland. The Trailblazers do cover as a large 13 and a half point underdog. But reportedly, the Portland Trailblazers are going to challenge the result of that game, playing it under protest. 
Yeah, by the way, Portland's playing for ping pong balls. They probably shouldn't be upset even if they got shafted <laughs> yesterday. They'd rather take the loss here. Good win for Oklahoma City. But just getting back from a coaching standpoint, like, understandably, like, we laugh sometimes at post-game press conferences, right, where you really are allowed to get after the refs, you pay the fine, and they move on. But you know what that doesn't do, Ben? It doesn't hurt your team when you yell and scream in the post-game to get your point across. You know what it hurts your team? When you have a one-point lead and a call doesn't go your way, so you make a mockery there and get double-teched and thrown out of the basketball game, which then you end up losing the game, and then you protest on top of it. Yeah. I watch the play. We, we see it all the time in sports. It's not the job of the referee to watch a double team and also have an eye on you as the coach trying to run up the half court and get a timeout here. It was a tough call. It didn't go your way, but you can't explode. If you're down five points at that point, yeah, get angry, get thrown out, and make a point there. But your team had the lead at that point. You got teched up. Probably the reason you lost that game. So tough look for Fisher there. I don't even know why they're heading in and saying, you know what, let's protest this basketball game. Just take the loss. It's what you wanted anyway. You are right. The Blazers are certainly a team looking forward to their future. Scoot Henderson, leading scorer for Portland last night in Oklahoma City. Of course, he was the third overall pick. He scored 19 points for Portland. Shea Gilders Alexander, 33 points over his prop of 31 and a half. Also had 10 dimes. And SGA leads the NBA in steals. He had five last night now we go out to the big easy the pelicans booked as a seven point home favorite against the utah jazz the jazz entered winners of 12 of their last 16 games and that including dropping two in a row make that three straight losses for utah a big victory for new orleans last night at home 153 to 124 new orleans covers as a seven point home favorite cj mccollum the leading scorer for the pels he had 33 points last night from the nba ranks to conference action in college basketball that's next 